Heidi here from Rain Country Homestead. In this video, I'm just going to start off with a very quick sewing tip that I didn't think of when I was making the skirt video. And just one more thing I want to point out because this one is, is if you're going to put the raw seam on the inside, uh, I want to show you what I do when I do the inside because there's a different, another extra step I take to finish it off with. Um, I got an order for several of these skirts from one of my subscribers and so since I'm making this one for her and she wants her the seams on the inside because she wants the more finished look, then what I do, as you, you can see this is, you can kind of see there, I've got, I've got the third, most of the third tier is on, or yeah, most of, the, most of the third tier is on. No, actually I think I've started on the fourth, excuse me. But um, anyway, and that's, that's what it looks like from that side. So this is the inside. And then what I do, and this can be a little bit tricky, you wanna really be paying attention is I like to go over these seams to lock them down and help prevent more fraying. Usually once this has been washed a couple of times, it doesn't fray anymore anyway. But, but this is an extra step that gives it more sturdiness and, and more finish. And I'll go over the top of the seam, um, the, you know, the edges, with a zigzag stitch, which I usually set on this machine, it would be a three, so it's a little bit closer together on the zigzag stitch. So as you're sewing, you want to really be careful. I'm, I'm not going to move really fast when I'm doing this because what I found, if I go to start going too fast, like I would when I'm sewing two straight edges together, um, it, because, it not, okay, no, let me stop there. Notice I have the flat, the flat edge on the top, the ruffled edge on the bottom. I found this works better. And it's easier to keep track of what you're doing. As you're moving along, you want to make sure that you constantly keep laying this flat and making sure this stays flat. If you have it laid out in this pat, in this with the flat on top and the ruffle on the bottom, you're gonna be less likely to have problems but it will still happen, and that is, if you're not paying attention, the bottom layer will, I'll show you from the top layer, the bottom layer will fold over and you won't see it, and it will get caught up in the hem, and you might be, you know, bombing along and get all the way to the end and not even realize it until you have the skirt put together. And so then you have to go get your seam ripper, pull it out, and then redo it, and it's, it's frustrating. But um, anyway, so that's what you want to be careful of. Okay, so now, so that you can see more of my face, because you don't need to see the rest of that. I'm going to bring that up. So, because, you know, sometimes my videos, I cut off the top of my head, and that's probably not the most <laughs> enjoyable thing. Um, from this point on in the video, <clears throat> any of you who came in here to see the sewing tip, I recommend that maybe you just want to shut it off, because I'm going to get a little bit spiritual. I'm going to read some scripture, and I'm going to share with you some things that are on my heart. So here's your chance to run away if you want to. And for the rest of you, um, well, thanks for hanging in there. So, as a lot of people in the community know, you know, there's, there's been some issues that have come up, and I just, I debated whether or not I should bother saying anything, but I just feel like I, there's something that's just really heavy on my heart about this, and I, I just want to get it out there. Because, I've only been really a part of this in this whole YouTube com community, and I'm not just talking about one network. I'm talking about the community as a whole and everyone that's involved for, what, six weeks, couple months tops? And I've been just so thrilled with how, you know, and incredibly grateful with how everyone within it has welcomed me in with open arms and been very accepting and loving towards me. And it's meant a lot to both me and my husband. And thus, when some certain issues came up between a few individuals, that's, you know what, 
Those are things that will happen in life. Whenever you get a group of people together, there's going to be differences of opinions, differences of beliefs, differences of what uh, version of the Bible we use, and whatever. And even within a homesteading community, Christians or not, you're going to have differences in the way that you do things. And I... I mean, my little thing that's on my heart is actually not, is more than just one thing. It's kind of a, it's just a whole grand scale of things. And so I don't believe there's any one right way to do your homestead. And we're all going to make mistakes along the way. And hopefully we're all going to be smart enough and humble enough to realize that we need to learn from those mistakes and we move on. And, and for example, with me and my, 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 trying, my off-grid laundry, I'm learning, all right? I, yes, I still have a, you know, I've been drying clothes, line drying clothes for many years, both inside and outside. But to wash clothes by hand is relatively new. I've had to do it before but not on a regular basis. So, you know, I want to get to where I don't have to rely on hand wringing because I'm getting progressively older and, and uh, I don't know how strong my hands will be five, 10 years, 20 years from now. So I'm trying to find methods that I can wash the clothes that works for me. We picked up the, walk, the mop bucket at, for a dollar at a garage sale and that was my chance to finally give it a try. And I'm finding through the process what's working and what's not. And people have been offering their tips and suggestions and please know that I appreciate that. Um, some of that I might take up and some of that I might say, well, that's not really the, what's gonna work for me. And no hard feelings one way or the other. I appreciate the advice. I really, really do. <laughs> Um, and I, you know, and I'm finding that the ringer on the mop, the mop bucket method, I'm loving how it's working. The ringer, I'm not. I keep working with it, I keep trying, and I still end up having to ring the clothes out by hand, and that's what I'm trying to get away from. And so, the great news is I did finally find a really nice looking um, 1924 ringer. <laughs> on eBay that I won the bid on yesterday. So I'm very excited. So there'll be an update video on that once we get it set up. And I can start using it. I'm so excited. Now who gets excited about a, a ringer for doing laundry by hand? People like us, right? Anyway, so what I'm saying is I'm learning through the process. I'm not trying to show you the right way to do things. I'm just showing you what I'm doing, and I'm learning it as I go. And, you know, we're all gonna have opinions, we're all gonna have thoughts, and, and that's fine. But we shouldn't let those things, those differences in the way we see things come between us and destroy a community. Because you know what, we have a really good thing going here. We have a really good message to share with others. There's so many people out there that are, are hungry for information. And they're, they're seeing that the more self-sufficient life is the way to go. And they're understanding the importance of it and why now, more than ever, we need to head in that direction as, as a nation as a whole. And with the, our processes of learning, and even, yes, all of our different ways of doing things, because our differences are gonna reach a broader group of people. And so, when we have conflictions with each other, and yes, they're gonna happen, because you know what, we're all humans, and we're all gonna make mistakes, and we're all gonna say something wrong, and we're all gonna do something wrong, and somebody's gonna get hurt. I am not without fault in, in doing this, and, my own relationships and I've had to ask for forgiveness and go to the Bible and seek out where, you know, and ask God to change me and work in my heart. And if 
we don't humble ourselves and see where we need to change, then there's never, we're never gonna get better. Our goal is as, as homesteaders, off-gridders, preppers, whatever you call yourself, our goal is to constantly be better in ourselves and our situation. And if we allow little conflicts to go out of control, that's not, that's not bettering ourselves. So, and I'm not saying this to just a small group of people that are involved. In fact, where I've been most dismayed is not the direct people involved. Because you know what, I look at that and say, you know what, that's normal. Those things happen and are we gonna be willing, you know, you know, if it's me, are we gonna be willing to, let, to see the change in ourselves? We, it's just something we have to do. And it's, it's to be expected. Where my dismay is, is the way other people from the outside have jumped into something that is none of their business and had their, have made very hurtful and cruel remarks back and forth and felt the need to jump on one side or the other. And I don't think there's one side. I don't think we should be, I don't think we should be making and creating sides. I don't think we should be taking sides. I think what we should be doing is pulling together even more as a community and, and helping each other and helping the people that are having a hard time right now work through this and not feed the flames of hate and resentment. Because the example that now we're setting when we do that to the rest of those that are silently watching is a very poor example. And it's gonna give people a distaste for what we're doing and our lifestyle rather than want to try to change and better themselves. So I'm speaking more to those people that feel the need to, to feed those flames, all right? You should be helping these people work through or just staying out of it altogether and praying for them, which is mostly what I'm trying to do. Staying out of the middle of it and praying for these people because you know what? I see the good in all of them. And that's what I choose to do. All of these people, all of them, have something valuable to offer to all of us. And I won't unsubscribe from their channels. I mean, maybe if they came in and started personally attacking me, maybe I would. But for the most part, I see the good. And that's what I'm choosing to do. I see what I can glean from them. And hopefully I have something to give back. And I pray that I have something to give back. Because we're all putting in an effort. So with that, I want to, this is the scripture I wanted to read. And this is from Philippians. And keep in mind, I'm reading from the King James Bible. And it's Philippians 4. And I'm going to start, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and start with verse 8. But I, I recommend that anytime anyone gives you scripture or reads to scripture in your own time, go back and read it within the context of the whole chapter. And then cross-reference and read it within the context of the Bible as a whole because everything needs context, context, context is incredibly important. But to keep it short, I'm just going to read a few verses here. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say, rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report. If there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on those things. So that's what I wanna close with. Remember to think on the good things and, and uh, give thanks for what you have and what we all have to offer to each other. And remember to thank those people that have 
given you something valuable that you can use and that you can pass on to your own family. All right, that's all I have to say. I hope it wasn't too long. And please understand, I'm not trying to preach. That's not my position as a woman to preach. I'm just sharing with you what's on my heart and I'm reading to you some scripture. So I hope you'll take this for what it is and know that I love and care and pray for you all. Thanks for watching. Take care. God bless.